I believe it was about six months ago that I made up this Indian blanket design feature ring that I wanted to put into a segmented vessel at some point. Well, I think it's about time I do that. Now, there's already a video on how to make this, so I won't go into all those details. I will put a link in the description box below the video so you can look that up if you want to see how it's done. Also, I'm not going to show every step involved in making a segmented vessel. I've got a nine part series on that. I think that's plenty. So if you haven't seen any of these, there will be links in the description box and you can look them up. So now let's see what we can do about making a vessel to feature this feature ring. I have a disc of 3 quarter inch MDF, 16 inches in diameter so it will fit on my lathe. I want to turn a shell recess in it that will accept this. That way this will be perfectly centered and I can true up both the top and bottom of the ring so it will be ready to accept the other rings. Now one of the problems is that I've screwed this faceplate to it and MDF does not hold screws very well at all. So what I want to do is run a bead of hot glue all the way around the outside and there's a problem there. The metal is cold. It's going to cool off the glue very quickly. So I have had this sitting for about 15 minutes getting hot and I'm hoping that's going to be hot enough. So now I'll try putting the glue around it. I'm just putting that bead of glue there I'll let it cool and then just see how well it holds to the metal. Well, as I had feared, the glue does not hold to the metal all that well at all. However, I've built it up real well and I'm hoping that just that ring will keep this from flexing and moving anywhere. All I can do is try it. We'll see how this works. As usual, I've had a change of heart. I decided that putting a shallow recess into the MDF wasn't going to be good enough. It would also weaken a little bit, so I glued a second disc on top. Now what I want to do is cut a disc out there. I've only glued about an inch and a half around the outside. So depending on how much that glue is migrated toward the center, I should be able to cut a disc out up to as much as 13 inches. So I'm going to do that next, and we'll carry on from there. I found the center spot on the disc and then I measured out six and a half inches giving me a 13 inch diameter disc that I want to cut out of there. If the glue is moved in I won't get that much. Then I have to put this in here so I need to expand that until it will fit. The diagonal measurement from point to point is just under 13 and a half inches. I'll be using my parting tool just to part this out of here. And I brought the live center up just to make sure it doesn't come out of there. It's not even touching, but it's just there for a little security. Now there's going to be an awful lot of dust, so I'm going to turn on my overhead air filter and I'm going to be wearing my air shield. I'm in there three quarters of an inch. It's not coming free, so I must have a little glue been migrated this way. The glue did migrate over a little bit but I've got a disc that I'll be able to use in the future. Now I'm just going to expand this a little bit until the feature ring will fit inside. I've drawn a second ring at 13 and a half inches. I'm going to stay just inside that line a little bit, clean out this part, and then I will test the feature ring to see how well it fits.
I think that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to put some hot glue beads on the corners to make sure I bind them to this ring. Then I'm going to true up this edge. I'm going to use a sanding board, get it nice, and then I'll take it out, reverse it, and do the other side. I had another change of heart, big surprise. I decided to put the glue inside here. The reason being, I think it'll be a lot easier to scrape it off than if it runs down inside here. So now I'm just going to true up this edge. Now I'm going to use a sanding board to make sure it's perfectly flat. My sanding board is from a 2x4. I jointed it to make sure it's perfectly straight. And on one side I've put 80 grit sandpaper, on the other 100 grit sandpaper. I've attached it with two sided tape. Lasts a fairly good long time. And then all I have to do is just change it, put on some new sandpaper and I'm ready to go. Now I'm going to use the sanding board in this fashion and sand this until it's perfectly flat. And that's all it takes. Well, this jig worked very well. It sanded nicely on both sides, ready to accept the next rings. This I'm just going to take apart. I may be able to use this again in the future in some manner, refabricate it in some way. Now I'm going to take some time and go make the other rings. I'm not going to show how to make the rings because that's in the other series and you're welcome to take a look at it. No use doing it all over again. So, I'll be back. I've drilled a two inch hole in the middle of the glue block that I've set on the face plate. I've done that so that I can use the cone from my one way live center to hold this in place. So I'm going to glue this first ring on and in fact I'll probably glue a few others on before I come back. I have a six inch disc. It's one quarter of an inch thick. And I'm going to use that as the floating disc. So now I have to make the recess in the first ring to accept that. I have the disc inside the recess. I put one drop of glue at the top and one at the bottom in line with the grain so that it can float and expand within the recess. I'll give it a few minutes for the glue to dry and then I'll put the next ring on. Ring number five is birch and only one eighth of an inch thick. So I'm parting it off of a three quarter inch thick ring and we'll use the remainder for ring number seven. Got the right thickness here, now I'll just sand this board until it's the same thickness all the way across. I use a pencil to mark the thickness that I want the ring to be and then use a bowl gouge to start trimming it away. Now 
That's about as close as I can expect to get with the tools. Now I'm going to finish flattening that with the sanding board. Then I can add the next ring. This is one of those times when I should have been paying attention to my chart. I didn't want this to be three quarters of an inch. This one's only supposed to be half inch. So now I have to take that off. I won't bother showing it. I'll be back after this is done and the next ring is put on. While I had the feature ring in the jig I used to flatten the surfaces, I put two rings on here to designate the minimum inside diameter and the maximum outside diameter. The bowl is actually going to be thinner than this, but this gave me an indication where to start. I've drawn a line here and I'm going to turn it from here in. Turn this away. After I glue the feature ring on, I can true it up better inside. But it's easier to start now without the feature ring on there. Once I have the feature ring on, I'm going to want to use a steady rest to keep it running smooth. The area where this ring is sitting on top of the floating disc is extremely thin there now and tends to chip out. So I'm going to use my skew chisel to define an edge there and then I will use a scraper to clean it up. I'm going to sand the floating disc now and just the ring above it. Later I will finish contouring this and blend it in, but I want to do this while it's wide open now and I have ready access. I'll be back as soon as that sanding is finished. I've now got it sanded from here all the way in to 400 grit. I once had someone tell me it's not necessary to do that because it's the inside of a vessel with a very small opening. No one's going to be able to touch it. But I personally feel that if you're going to do something, you should do it the best you can. I have even seen bowls and vessels from turners at different galleries and markets where they didn't sand the bottom of the vessel or the bowl properly. I think that's half finished. But that's just my opinion and that's why I do it that way. Now I'm going to 
glue the feature ring on and then I'll be back. I have my steady rest on now and I'm ready to start turning the feature ring. I'm going to first turn the outside just to match up to the size of the ring below it and then I will work on the inside. I'm going to start with my three quarter inch bowl gouge. I think the extra weight and heft of it might just be a benefit. I'm getting some very serious chip out on the leading edge as it's coming around. So I'm going to switch now to my 3 8 inch bowl gouge and see if I can get cleaner cuts. It's a bit better, all right. Still a lot of chip out, but I think it's from before when I was using the three-quarter inch gouge. That's cleaned it up quite a lot. I'm still going to have to do some shear scraping here, I can tell. There are times when a steady rest is virtually worth its weight in gold. And this is the kind of time when it's necessary. Now I'll be able to move it out when I want to because this is rounded as well. I'm going to start cleaning up the inside now. I'm turning it at 750 RPM. I'm going to switch now to my easy wood finisher to try to match up this curve in here. That's pretty nice. I'm happy with that. I still need to do a little more turning on the inside here though.
I'll be going back to the scraper now to continue trying to clean up this joint. There's a little bit of chipping still visible on the outside. I'm going to do a bit of shear scraping to get rid of that. When shear scraping, the objective is to get the finest shavings off that you can, sometimes referred to as angel hair. This is actually a little coarser than what I'm trying for. That's a little more like it. Some of this is very nice and fine. Well, I think that's shear scraped well enough that now I'll just sand this. I have the outside of the feature ring and the inside, plus the rest of the bottom on the inside, sanded to 400 grit. Now I'm going to turn this steady rest around so the wheels are on this side, bring the wheels out on here, and I'll start to turn the outside at the bottom. Right, I have reversed the steady rest. Got my banjo brought around here so I can do the turning. And now I'm going to start shaping the bottom a bit. I have a large set of calipers that I will use to constantly check the thickness, trying to maintain the thickness I have here all the way around.
Well, I've got the shape right where I want it. Now I'm going to do a little bit of shear scraping to clean this up. Then I'll sand this. And then I'll be back. I didn't even notice it, but I've got a very small flat spot right there. And I didn't notice it until I put the ruler on and ran it around and you can hear it. You can hear where it, in fact, it's a little bit concave in that spot. So now, I know a lot of people would say leave it. My wife just said, oh, it looks fine, but I'm not able to accept that. So I'm going to try to round it from the center of the feature ring to that spot very gently. And how many times have you said, I'll just do one more cut and had something blow up? Nothing ventured, nothing gained, again. That's quite a bit better. I think I might be able to finish that off with just some shear scraping and then of course I'll sand it again. Well, I'm happy with it now. I managed to get that bump out of there. Nice, smooth and round now. I've sanded it up to 800 grit on the outside, 400 on the inside. And now I'm ready to put the ninth ring on top of the feature ring. Whenever possible, I like to get more than one ring out of a ring if I'm making thin rings. In other words, I'll take this thicker ring, and because I have to make two thin rings, one eighth and one quarter inch, I should be able to split this and get both rings out of it. The first thing I like to do is turn the ring round. Then I can just use a pencil to make a mark indicating the width that I want to part the ring off at. I start splitting the ring with a parting tool, but I do not try to part all the way through because it's such a wide ring. I will finish it off with a saw. After a few minutes with the sanding board, this is now perfectly flat and ready for gluing on the next ring. The plan I drew out shows that I should be opening this hole at the top on this ring to about eight and a half inches. So I'm going to make a mark, I'm going to open it up to eight and then I will fine tune it from there later. That will give me plenty big enough hole that I can get my hollowing tool inside I'm going to use my parting tool to go straight through at this point. That will salvage this disc and I can use it in the future. I have serious doubts I ever will, but I'm not about to waste it if I don't have to. and something for the future. The only tool I have that I believe will do the job in here is this hollowing tool from Easy Wood. And I'm going to give that a shot right now. That should be enough to give you an idea what I'm doing with this tool. And I'm not going to bore you having you sitting there watching the whole thing, so I'll turn off the cameras and be back when I finish this hollowing. I've completed the hollowing and I've sanded inside now to 400 grit all the way up to here. When I get the next rings on, it's going to be virtually impossible to get all the way down to the bottom to put on the finish. So I'm going to put Minwax Poly 
the Minwax Wipe On Polyon now up to here. I usually prefer to use three or four coats of Wipe On Poly, but because this is going to be so little if ever seen on the inside, I'm just using it mostly to seal it. So I'm going to only use two coats. It'll take me a while to put these on and let it dry between coats. And then I will be back to do the last two rings. I'm using the hollowing tool to bring the curve around on the inside. Now I can start chewing up the outside and prepare to glue on the last ring. The last ring is glued on now and now it's time to start shaping the top. I'm going to start the curve right at the top birch ring. I believe I have the exterior shape pretty much the way I want it now. It's a matter now of just sanding this. Now I'm going to hollow on the inside, match up the curve that's coming from the ring below the top ring. Curve is matched up nicely now. All I need to do is sand. It's going to be a little tricky. I won't be able to get very far in there, but I'll get far enough to sand what is not done. And then it'll be time to put the finish on, and I'll be back after this is sanded. The sanding is finished now. Up to 800 grit on the outside, 400 on the inside. I should have mentioned I made the entry hole at the top with a one and one quarter inch Forstner bit was the quickest and easiest way to make an accurate hole. And I made it one and one quarter because that's the smallest size I feel safe sticking my finger inside with sandpaper. Works quite well. So now I'm going to put on finish. I'm going to put on fairly dry on the inside because I can't see inside there and I don't want it dripping and running. So I'll put a few coats on that way. And on the outside I'll put on three coats or four maybe. And then I'll be back. I intend to reverse it into a donut chuck to remove the glue block. 
I usually part it off like this, but I was thinking it might be safer and easier to do it with the donut chuck and having not tried it before, I think it'll be a good thing to try. I have the vessel mounted in my donut chuck now. I've suspended a length of quarter inch ready rod just so I can take a good look and see how close I am to being true when I'm turning this. It's not perfect, but it's so close I know I couldn't get it any better. Now I'm going to remove the face plate and then turn away the glue block. I won't bother boring you with all of that, but I'll be back to show you the end just before I finish taking all the glue block off. I'm drilling the recess which will hold my logo coin. All I have left to do now is sand the bottom, glue in my logo coin, sign and date it, and then I'll be back. And due to the magic of video editing, I'll be back in just a second. Now I know I left that vessel right here. I have it. Well, could you bring it back, please? Yeah, no problem. There you go. Thank you. Nice shirt. You're on a cruise? Yeah, I have, actually. Hey, Terry and Jean, remember this? Alaska, baby. Well, I got things to do. You have a good one. Okay, you have a good day, too. Thanks. Don't let him kid you, he's never been anywhere. But as long as I don't have medication, he's okay. Anyway, my project is finished. I think this shape's gonna take a little time to grow on me. It's something different. I don't mind it, but I'm not exactly in love with it yet. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Have yourself a great day in your shop. And remember, always be safe. Don't forget to subscribe. Come back again next time, please. You take care now. Bye-bye. If you would like to know how to build either the donut chuck or the steady rest that I used for this video, I have videos for both of those and I have links in the description box below this video so that you can find them.